when connecting the laser driver to these high current terminals on my HP 6428B. It occurred to me that I've never taken it apart on camera before. It's quite interesting though, so let's do that now. I bought it as sort of a kit back in April 2015, when they used to make good quality products. The previous owner was a real high power enthusiast, and of course I bought a few more things. Before losing interest, he had freshly repainted the enclosure and removed all the disintegrated cables. That must have been so necessary after 37 years. This year is its 40th birthday, and I'm not exaggerating when saying that it is still pretty and useful, although maybe a bit overweight. The weight is there for two very good reasons. A huge inductor in series with the output. And an even huger mains transformer, of course. It has only one output, meaning that in a worst case scenario of say 1 volt at 40 ampere, the power supply would have to dissipate 20 volt times 40 ampere, 800 watt. Holy moly. Where are the cooling facilities which are supposed to make that possible, huh? Well, that's what makes it interesting. There are no power transistors in here. The regulation is happening on the primary side of the mains transformer. And these thyristors are responsible. That's a very energy efficient and easy to build approach. But they had to equip all of these big expensive components in order to get competitive specs. It must be less than ideal by today's standards because power supplies are built differently now. Here's a Siglent SPD3303X for example. A real state of the art programmable DC power supply. That was such a necessary upgrade to my test gear towers. After using only power supplies that are significantly older than I am, some of its features seem futuristic. The graphic color display may seem like a gimmick at first, but it is the feature that I've gotten used to almost instantly. It displays all the normal operating parameters for channels 1 and 2, or voltage and current waveforms for the same. Even the most stubborn oldtimers will have to agree that that's useful. They often say that changing values are illustrated by an analog meter, much more understandably than by a digital readout. But in that regard, the Siglin's waveform display is second to none. I only hope that in a future firmware update they'll make it possible to adjust units per division. That would make it even better. There's also a timer function that allows you to make up to 5 adjustments after any number of seconds. That's useful for all kinds of automation or as a general purpose safety shutdown. But again I have a few suggestions for future firmware updates. The list should be longer, the resolution in time should be finer, and there should be an option for cycling. That way we could program low frequency waveforms which would be truly amazing. It would also be useful if we could influence all three channels from the same timer. That way we could do power supply sequencing, which is necessary for many advanced chips like FPGAs. Some of these niche features are available in the PC software. And even if not, there's a lab view driver. That allows you to incorporate the Siglin power supply in complex software projects. But that's still exotic. What about the normal everyday applications? Well, it's precise, powerful and quiet when it can be. Quiet both in the cooling fan and the output ripple and noise department. Their spectacular noise specification of less than 1 mV RMS is verifiable and true even under load. It applies to all three channels and it is what you'd expect in a good linear power supply. Channels 1 and 2 can be programmed independently, in series or in parallel to extend their voltage or current capabilities. Hardware-wise there's already been an extensive teardown on the EEV block, so I don't want to go into too much detail. But it's great to see that Siglent has taken some of Dave's advice and moved these cables away from the sharp edges. Which are also no longer rusting by the way. Very nice. Whether or not Siglent takes some of my uninformed advice and implements a few more software features, this is a fantastic power supply and it deserves a permanent spot on my desk. Those features will be in my own power supply though, that's for sure. This is the OSMU, my most ambitious project yet. OSMU is short for Open Source Measure Unit. But I'm not trying to make another Pico Ampere resolution device. Instead, it'll be a general purpose medium power 4 quadrant supply. Meaning that it can put out voltages between plus and minus 30 volt while sourcing or sinking currents up to 10 ampere. Simple so far, but already such a device has a ton of cool functions. Now what if I managed to put three isolated channels onto one side of a small circuit board? Well, that'd be wonderful in every way. But my final goal is to make it work like a voltage or current waveform generator. 
Nothing crazy, it only needs to reach a few kilohertz to encompass all of these wonderful functions. Since I do have a proper programmable power supply now, I can already start thinking about details like energy efficiency. What do you think? Good idea?